This question is from AP Physics 1 from 2017 AP Physics 1A exam. And in this question, they say that the left end of a rod of length D and rotational inertia I is attached to a frictionless horizontal surface by a frictionless pivot, as shown in the picture above. Point C marks the center midpoint of the rod. The rod is initially motionless, but is free to rotate around the pivot. A student will slide a disc of mass m uh, disc toward the rod with velocity v sub zero perpendicular to the rod, and the disc will stick to the rod at distance x from the pivot. The student wants to the rod disc system to end up with as much angular speed as possible. So in the question for A, they ask, suppose the rod is much more massive than the disc. To give the rod as much angular speed as possible, should the student make the disc hit the rod to the left of point C, to at point C or to the right of point C? So no matter where the disc will hit the rod, it carries some kinetic energy. Since it carries some kinetic energy, its, it's kinetic energy is going to change um, after the collision. Um, the disc's kinetic energy is going to change after the collision. The work is going to be done by the disc on the rod because the, the rod is going to acquire some kinetic energy after the collision. And um, because the rod changes its kinetic energy and the disc changes its kinetic energy, the work is going to be done on the pivot. And this work that is done on the pivot um, is coming from the force that the disc is going to apply on the rod. And the force, the distance away from the pivot um, is equal to torque. So because the disc is going to hit with some force at some point, so the force is going to be applied at that point. And the farther away um, the distance is from the pivot, the more torque is going to be present because the torque is equal to the force applied on the pivot, uh, the distance how far it is applied. So in this case, it is x. And the sign of an angle at which it is applied. So the sign of theta in our case is going to be perpendicular. So, and also the torque uh, for rotational motion, it's like a force, is equal to the angular, um, angular acceleration times the inertia of the rod. So the acceleration of the rod is going to change the most the farther away this force is applied from the pivot um, or the point of rotation. Also, the conservation of momentum is going to happen, not conservation of energy, but conservation of momentum. So um, the collision is going to be inelastic, so there cannot be conservation of energy. But for conservation of momentum or angular momentum, we have when the disk is moving toward the rod, momentum of the disk is equal to its mass its velocity, and that's going to be the distance at the moment when it hits the rod, um, how far it's going to hit it. So you see, it, the disc will have greater momentum the farther away it hits the rod from the rotation. So you could also explain um, that the farther away to the right the disc hits, the more momentum it carries, so the more momentum it will pass to the rod. Since the momentum of the rod is going to be the um, the inertia of the rod times its angular velocity, the more acceleration the rod acquires during the collision, the more the angular velocity will change over time. So the more momentum the rod is going to have. So the right answer for A would be to the right of point C. For the next question, they say that on the internet, a student finds the following equation for the 
post collision angular speed omega of the rod in this equation so omega is equal to the mass of the disc times the distance where it hits initial velocity of the disc over the inertia of um, rod so regardless of whether this equation for angular speed is correct does it agree with your qualitative reasoning in part a in other words does the equation for omega have the expected dependence as responded in part a so here is the equation that the student found i have omega is equal to mass of the disc times the distance initial velocity over the inertia of the rod and we know that the momentum of the disc before it collides with the rod is equal to the mass times velocity initial velocity times the distance where it's going to hit the rod and then uh, momentum of the rod after the collision is equal to the inertia of the rod times angular velocity of the rod after the collision if you set those two equal to each other you get m v sub zero x is equal to inertia times omega the only part that i would be concerned about is this one because they say that the disc sticks to the um to the rod so it's going to be the inertia of both of them and here they say that um, the rod has inertia i um, so it there it will be inertia so if i say that this inertia is inertia of both of them um, together after the collision then I could use this formula then omega is equal to mv sub zero x divided by the inertia of both of them because they stuck together part the way we justify that um, the farther away the from c on the right side the disc hits the rod the greater the initial the the velocity is going to be for the rod um, so if we just answer this question then we can say um, yes the um, the part b uh, correlates with uh, part a and the formula that the student found uh, could be correct if we choose to say no you also could earn points by saying no if you choose to say no then you can bring maybe that if inertia i is inertia of the rod only then um, you could not say that they are equal to each other because in this formula i uh, that we have would be inertia of both the rod and the disc so as long as you justify your answer with correct um, statements you still can earn the point whether you answered yes or no on part b of this problem for the next question they have that another student deriving uh, an equation for the post collision equation speed omega of the rod makes a mistake and comes up with a different formula and in this formula omega the angular velocity of the rod and the disc together after the collision are equal to inertia times the di distance away um, where it was hit initial velocity of the disc over the mass of the disc divided by the distance of the rod to the fourth power without deriving correct equation how can you tell that the equation is not uh, plausible in other words that is does not make physical sense briefly explain your reasoning i think the main concern that i would have with this formula would be the inertia because the inertia is opposing of the change of the velocity and you are saying that the bigger the inertia of the object is uh, the greater the change of the velocity so um, the inertia is the laziness and if you hit in with some force apply some force on the object of a larger mass the larger mass has larger inertia and the larger mass will oppose the change of the motion uh, so you need bigger force to change its uh, state or its velocity um, so the only concern that i would have with this problem is um, that and also the velocity the mass of the disc i don't like it being on the bottom as well because 
um, the greater the mass of the disc, the more momentum it carries. The more momentum it carries, the more change of the angular velocity of the rod is going to happen. So um, I see two big concerns right here that um, the inertia of the rod and the mass of the disc not in the right positions. If the inertia was on the bottom and mass was on the top in the numerator, then maybe I would say that would be okay formula. Without deriving, I would maybe agree with making sense, um, but otherwise uh, it doesn't make sense. And for the next question for D, they say that you should not assume that the rod is much more massive than the disc. Immediately before colliding with the rod, the disc's rotational inertia about the pivot is um, m disc x squared, and its angular momentum with respect to the pivot is m disc v sub zero x. Derive an equation for the post-collision angular speed omega of the rod. Express your answer in terms of d and disk i x v sub zero and physical constants if as appropriate. So for conservation of momentum, I have the momentum before, angular momentum before should be equal to the angular momentum after. So for the momentum before, I'm going to have the momentum initial of the disk and momentum of the rod initial. And then afterwards, I'm going to be have the momentum of the rod and the disc stuck together. So the momentum of the disc is, um, the formula for the momentum is m inertia times the velocity. And inertia of the disc is m of the disc x squared and its velocity. Um, so, so momentum for the disc, I have m x squared times its initial velocity and then plus the rod is not moving so its angular momentum is zero and afterwards uh, it's going to be the momentum of both of them so again a momentum a rotational momentum is equal to inertia of both of them so it's going to be a rod and disc together and their angular velocity so for both of them i have the momentum of the disc which is m inertia of the disk, which is mx squared, and then um, plus the inertia of the rod, and then omega, the velocity of both of them after the collision. To solve for angular velocity, I have angular velocity of both of them after the collision is equal to m of the disk x squared omega sub zero, and divided by m of the disk the distance uh, where it's going to be hitting the rod uh, plus I inertia of the rod. And for the last part of this problem, they ask you, consider the collision for which your equation in part D was derived, except now suppose the disc bounces backward off the rod instead of sticking to the rod. Is the post-collision angular speed of the rod when the disc bounces off it greater than less than or equal to the post-collision um, angular speed of the rod when the disc sticks to it. To answer this question, we're going to look again at both equations. So when the um, disc sticks to the rod, we have momentum before, which is mv sub zero x, momentum of the disc plus the initial momentum of the rod is zero. And then after they stick together, so you have the inertia of the rod plus the inertia of um, the disc and times angular velocity. So in this case, you have angular velocity is equal to mv sub zero x divided by the inertia of the rod and the disc together. where m is, the velocity, m is the mass of the disk. Now, if the disk bounces, and I'm going to say it bounces with the same velocity, but it doesn't, doesn't have to bounce with the same velocity. So if the disk bounces, you have this equation. You have m v sub zero x momentum of the disk plus the momentum of the rod before the collision. 
and then afterwards you will have the momentum of the rod and then plus momentum of the disc changes the direction so it's negative m v sub zero x and again it doesn't have to be the same velocity i'm just using it so don't add another variable it can be a different velocity it doesn't make a difference it's just going to make a different change to omega, to omega to angular velocity but it still will be there so if i add this term to the other side then i will get m v sub zero x plus m v sub zero x and again this velocity doesn't have to be v sub zero it could be another velocity still doesn't make a difference because it increases the angular velocity so if you wanted to calculate angular velocity in this case you would have m v sub zero x plus m v sub zero x or whichever velocity the disk has after the collision and all of that divided by the inertia of the disk so if you compare these two resulting angular velocities for when the disk bounces so this is the case when the disk bounces off the rod compared to the um, angular velocity of the rod if the disk sticks to it you see that the angular velocity of the rod is greater when the disk bounces off so um, the answer for this question would be greater and that is all i have for this question from 2017 ap physics one thank you for watching i hope you learned and it helped you to understand the concept of angular momentum um, and i hope i see you in my future videos